All right, guys, so as the video title uh, says, this is a real world um, kind of initial impression uh, review of the Ruger American 6.5 Creedmoor Go Wild. Um, let me just prelude this video a little bit. I am not a professional shooter. I am not a professional hunter. We are recreational shooters and we like to have fun and shoot steel targets primarily. Um, with that being said, if you're looking for an in-depth review on the Ruger American Go Wild, there are plenty of other videos you need to be watching. Um, this is going to be a real world, um, regular Joe impression, um, from the first time I fired this rifle. Um, and it's kind of going to be like a, a, a twofold initial impression. I want to give a shout out to, uh, Ruger for the rifle. And I want to give a shout out to Freedom Munitions for their ammo. Um, that's the, the two primary components here. Um, again, there's tons of reviews on every component um, you know, of, of this rifle. So if you want something really, really in-depth, this is not the video for you. You might as well go ahead and skip. Go on to the next one. Um, with all that being said, I'm going to give you the pros and cons, what I've noticed, how we set this rifle up, uh, what we shot, when we shot it, and what the results were. So... Let's get started. The Ruger American 6.5 uh, Creedmoor Go Wild. Uh, it is a 22 inch barrel. Uh, it does have a factory muzzle brake on it. Um, the Go Wild is because, well, they name it the Go Wild because it is the Go Wild uh, camo pattern and they Cerakote uh, the barreled action. Um, other than that, is it, it is essentially just a Ruger American Predator. They're essentially the same guns from what I understand. Uh, this gun has had nothing done to it. When I bought it brand new out of the box a couple of weeks ago, um, the only thing I did is I lubed up the bolt with some white lithium grease and I cycled it about 300 times just to get any imperfections from the manufacturing process, uh, those little burls and stuff, uh, off of it because a lot of folks complain about what they call the Ruger zip, maybe is the word for it. Uh, it sounds like a zipper, or somebody recently compared it to the sound of corduroy pants going back and forth. Um, after cycling it maybe 300 times or so uh, with the white lithium grease, I cleaned it, and I have a pretty smooth, quiet bolt. Um, it's not glass smooth. I'm sure I could polish it and do a bunch of other stuff, but that was, that was step number one. Step number two was mounting a Vortex. Uh, four by 24 um, by 50 uh, strike eagle on it. Um, you can buy more expensive glass. You can buy a whole lot better glass. Again, there are reviews on this scope as well. Um, the this this model in particular did come with the uh, AICS uh, magazines. Uh, comes with a three round magazine, so you can put one in the chamber, three rounds in, and have four round capacity ultimately. I think they make those magazines up to 10 rounds if you decide to, to go that route. So this is what we did. Um, I, I found some um, Freedom Munitions. Like I said, it's going to be kind of like a twofold first impression. Um, Freedom Munitions uh, 6.5 Creedmoor ammo. A lot of folks bashed, uh, and I've heard a lot of, uh, or a ton of reviews, people uh, bashing Freedom Munitions. I know they went through a recent bankruptcy took on new ownership, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's what I found. That's what I bought. I made a phone call to Freedom Munitions. And let me just say this. I don't do reviews on anything unless I have a great experience or I have a horrible experience. If you're right there in the middle and you meet my expectation, you get no review. Um, you, you, you met the general expectation. So um, this is my initial review. Uh, and first impressions of, of this rifle. My son and I recently sold our 308 uh, Creedmoor build, which was a Howa 1500 long range on a Bell and Carlson stock with a different trigger and, and uh, it had a, the bipod and all that stuff. And that thing probably weighed 20 pounds. We wanted something more portable in case we ever wanted to go hunting. And we also just wanted to try a different round. We had never tried 6.5 Creedmoor and we were kind of attracted to it. So uh, we did buy 
Uh, some Freedom Munitions 140 grain. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. 140 grain uh, hollowtail, um, hollowtail, <laughs> hollow point boat tail ammo. I bought it and then I sent uh, an inquiry phone call over to Freedom Munitions. And I was like, hey, just curious, what bullet are you using uh, for that round? I don't care about the brass and I don't care about the primer. I'm just curious what bullet's in it. And they did say it was a Sierra Match King 140 grain. Cool. Uh, I've never had any experience with Sierra Match Kings. Um, but from what I know and from what I've read on YouTube, read on YouTube, saw on YouTube, um, it, it, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty accurate round. So I was like, eh, you, we'll, we'll see what happens. So again, bought the gun, took it out of the box, greased the bolt, 300, maybe 400 cycles, somewhere around in there just to kind of get it to, to wear in and kind of seat itself in. Um, one negative there. Uh, I did notice when I cycled this rifle that right here on the bolt handle, you can see that shiny piece right there. It did wear some of the Cerakote off. So when you come up, you're hitting the top of the action. So obviously that is going to wear some of your Cerakote off. If this was a $1,000 rifle, I would have a problem with that. This is not a $1,000 rifle. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so we greased it up. We got our scope in. There are tons of videos on how to properly mount a scope. We balanced the rifle. We balanced the scope. We used a plumb bob to make sure that our vertical reticle was in line with the, with the vertical string because then you know you're on. It's set up nicely. Again, this is the Vortex Strike Eagle 4x24x50. And these are Vortex low mount um, rings. So that's what we did. Didn't do anything else to it. Didn't change the trigger, factory trigger. And we take it out to the range. Um, some, a buddy of mine has some property and we take it out to the range to sight this thing in. Uh, we bore sighted. Uh, we had it on a Caldwell Steady Rest NXT, which is like a $35. It looks just like this one, but it was my buddy in Tennessee. It was, it was his rig. Um, it's like a $35 rifle rest. So it is not a lead sled. It is not locking that rifle in. Um, there's tons of movement. It is not very stable at all. That being said, um, that's what we used to, to sight this thing in. So we bore sighted, made our adjustments on our scope, make sure everything was kind of close just to get on paper. So using the Freedom Munitions 140 grain, 6.5 Creedmoor, we pull the trigger. Well, good news is first shot on paper, we hit paper. Then we used uh, the method that I like to, to sight things in with, which is where you essentially have two people. You have one guy on the gun and firearm, and then you have one guy on the turret. So I'm holding on bullseye and my buddy Greg is adjusting my turrets and we're taking from the bullseye over to the point of impact. Because in that way, when you bring your rifle back down to the bullseye or your intended point of impact, you're, you're bringing everything back down. So we fired one shot on paper and then we got it back down to the bullseye and we fired three shots. I fired two, Greg fired one. That result at 50 yards is this. My two are down here touching. Greg's is up there touching the red. I measured center to center and we had 0 0.5 inches, exactly one half of an inch MOA at 50 yards. Hmm, not too shabby. So I was okay with junky, bashed, people complaining about quality, freedom, munitions, ammo. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a half MOA at 50 yards, but that's 50 yards. So I said, Greg, let's not make any adjustments whatsoever. Let's tape this target on out to uh, 100 yards and just pull the trigger and see what kind of group we get. We know we're going to be off zero at 100. Let's see what kind of group we get. So we move the target out to 100. I loaded three rounds. I squeezed the trigger three times, took my time, you know, breathing, trigger technique, whatever. And this is what we got. Two rounds touching, 
almost three rounds touching. Again, measuring from center to center on that group. That group was three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch at a hundred yards. So bash freedom munitions as much as you want, but I guarantee you that that is gonna be the target round that I shoot going forward. I don't need to shoot anything else. I'm shooting far beyond sub MOA with a entry level build. So um, all you folks who want tighter groups and all that stuff, you're far better shooters than I am. And hey, no harm, no foul, props up to you. But to do uh, the job that we want this rifle to do, <laughs> less than a half inch MOA, uh, the first seven shots out of this gun, I have no complaints. Um, we will go uh, real quick. So, I mean, I, I just want to give a shout out to Freedom uh, Munitions. So for any of those that are concerned, out of this rifle, I don't know about your rifle, but out of this rifle, that's my target round. That's what I'll be shooting going forward. And again, it is using the 140 grain uh, Sierra Match King round out of it. There were a couple of complaints that I read before I um, purchased this rifle. Uh, folks complained about the flimsiness of the uh, of the stock. Yes, this stock is very flimsy. It is, of course, hollow. Um, but I think Ruger has done that for a couple of reasons. Number one, they've done it for cost savings to keep this uh, rifle within a, a reasonable price point as an entry-level rifle or a deer hunting rifle. And number two, because of the weight, because it is a fairly uh, light rifle. The biggest complaint that I heard were people saying, you know, they claim it's a free floated barrel, but their their stock was touching their barrel. So the moment I took it out of the box, the first thing I did was slide paper under it. And I've got nothing touching, absolutely nothing. I didn't dremel anything, I didn't sand anything. Literally, the only thing I did was just cycle that bolt with some grease on it a whole bunch of times just to kind of get it smoothed out a little bit. Um, I did not change the trigger. I am using the factory trigger. Um, I didn't change anything on this rifle. We balanced the rifle, we balanced the scope, we plumbed it, we threw some rounds in it, and we shot it. That's it. My first impressions are this rifle isn't going anywhere, period. Uh, I recently bought, just a comparison real quick, I, I recently bought a uh, Daniel Defense um, AR, uh, it's the DD M4 V7 SLW. Uh, I put a Strike Eagle 1x8 on top and I uh, offsetted a 45 degree uh, Viper Vortex red dot on it. Uh, I don't have any range time with that yet. Um, I did an unboxing on it, I might share that. Uh, eventually, but um, when I was looking, I was like, you know, Daniel Defense makes high quality stuff. I was thinking for a high quality rifle, you know, maybe I want to go Daniel Defense, and I looked at their Delta Five uh, bolt action, and you're out like fifteen to seventeen hundred bucks, probably even more than that right now, uh, to get guaranteed sub MOA with match grade factory loads. That's a pretty bold claim. Guess what? We just did it with a Ruger American, essentially a Predator, but again, this one's the Go Wild, a Ruger American with a Strike Eagle on top. Now, if you wanna fork out that kind of cash, by all means, go for it. Um, am I glad that I didn't? <laughs> Absolutely. I can drop this gun, I can scratch this gun, I can, I can beat this gun to death and shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Vortex customer service I hear is phenomenal. So if anything were to happen to this piece of glass, scope, optic, whatever you wanna call it, whatever verbiage you wanna use, I shouldn't have any issues because they have lifetime warranties, they're fog proof, they're shock proof, they're yada, yada, yada. Again, if you want a specific review on this optic alone, they're out there. If you want an in-depth review on this rifle, they're out there. If you want an in-depth review on this ammo, it's probably out there. From what I saw, people just don't like Freedom Munitions for whatever reason. But I'm showing you that at 100 yards, brand new rifle, 3 eighths of an inch. 
three eighths, brand new rifle, three eighths of an inch at a hundred yards. I can't complain with that. Can somebody hand load that and get it probably even smaller? Maybe, I don't know. Are folks that are shooting $3,000, $5,000 Christensen arms and every other huge brand out there, competition shooting, can they get those smaller? I'm sure they can. But again, you're talking about, you know, three to $10,000 on what these people have in rifles versus what I've got in this one, which is less than a grand. Rings and all, less than a grand. Um, there are only two complaints I have with this rifle, two. Number one is I don't like how it wore the Cerakote off the bolt, which I showed you a little while ago. Not the bolt, I'm sorry, the, the bolt handle. I'm not a huge fan of that, but again, not a deal breaker. When we were standing behind it and, and trying to get a weld, a cheek weld, while it was on the bench, we noticed we couldn't get a really good cheek weld. We could get a really good chin weld. Again, not a deal breaker. I noticed when I just held it up and went offhand, I could get a cheek weld. So I don't know if it was just our angle uh, on the on the shooting bench that we were using, and and this uh, this rest. Um, but my my thought is worst case scenario, I'm going to buy one of those neoprene sleeves or uh, some sort of uh, modular extension to bring my uh, comb height up. If this had a Monte Carlo style stock on it, you wouldn't have that issue. But again, we're using low rings too, and we still had that issue. We had to go from a cheek weld to a chin weld to get a really good eye box uh, in, 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 our, in our sight. But again, to me, that's not a deal breaker because this is not a bench gun. This is a take out in the woods shoot gun. And if you want to throw it on some sandbags and reach out to a thousand yards, I'm betting it'll do it, uh, given obviously your, your proper dope and windage and all that stuff. Um, when we shot this rifle last weekend, it was 48 degrees in Tennessee. We were in a valley uh, at my buddy's property. You have hills on both sides and then a huge hill in the back. So I don't think we had any wind. At least if there was any wind, I didn't feel it. Um, so my initial impressions of this rifle, um, it's not going anywhere. This is our shooter. Um, I'm happy with the glass. Uh, it is illuminated if you get into a low light situation. The ammo, if I'm choosing target ammo and I don't hand load, which I don't have any hand loading equipment and maybe one day I will hand load just to save some money if we shoot that much, um, I'll, I'll go that route. But in the meantime, I will buy Freedom Munitions every single time. And again, Freedom Munitions, not Reman, it is new ammo. 140 grain, hollow point boat tail, match new is what they call it. Um, I don't know what powder they use. I don't know what primer they use. And their brass just says essentially 6.5 Creedmoor. Oh, it's Norma. It's Norma brass. Okay. So they use Norma brass and 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, Three-eighths of an inch at 100 yards. Uh, again, not competition shooter, not the most accurate guy, not a hunter. We shoot once, maybe twice a month if we're lucky. And I'm grouping three-eighths of an inch at 100 yards on a cheap rest. Guys, first impressions. I don't see how you could justify financially or even accuracy-wise doing anything else. Um, so those are my first impressions of the rifle. Um, it shot great for us. It shot great for us with that ammunition. So again, hats off and thanks to Freedom Munitions. Um, number one, for the quality of their product. Number two, for their customer support. Because again, I reached out to them after I purchased the ammo online. It's like, hey, I'm just curious what bullet you're using. Again, don't care about the brass or anything. I just want to know what bullet's in there. And they told me. Um, I got that, yeah, it was like a 48 hour return time. Um, so again, hats off to them. I, I am stoked about that product. I am stoked about this rifle, especially at the price point. Um, I am not going to change the trigger. 
I am not going to change the optic. I am not going to change anything on this rifle except I will add a sling, obviously, and I will probably do some research and figure out what kind of comb height adjustment I want just to get my cheek off or get more of a, a cheek weld versus that chin weld. I do like a cheek weld. Um, so I'm thinking about those neoprene sleeves. If you guys have any uh, experience with those or use them, or if you've got something else on your go wild, that's fine. But this video was more intended to give a first impression and not an in-depth review. Um, those are my first impressions. That is the first round I've ever shot out of this rifle. That is the only round I'm going to shoot out of this rifle until I look into possibly hunting at some point, And then I'll start looking into a hunting round. Um, but, I mean, how can you go wrong with the, uh, the amount of money that uh, I've invested in this rifle and the first ammunition ever fired through it well beyond sub-MOA at 100 yards? I almost hate sharing the video because it's almost like that little hidden gem that uh, you found and you don't want to share with your folks because you know it's going to get overrun. So, um, but again, I got to give credit where credit's due. Um, first, solid platform, happy with the gun. Second, decent optic, happy with what it does, for, especially for the price point. And again, Vortex, uh, Strike Eagle. Um, and then Freedom Munitions, again, I can't say enough about that round um, as far as positivity. I had no issues whatsoever. So, yeah, that, that's what we found with uh, shooting hours. I wish I had some range footage to show you, but unfortunately I don't. Um, but if you have any questions, if there's something that I missed, is there, if there's something that you want me to cover more in depth on the rifle, I'll be more than happy to. Um, so just reach out. Um, you can like it. You can not like it. This was my first review ever on YouTube on any firearm I've ever purchased. First review on YouTube uh, for anything for that matter. So, again, uh, feel free to comment, uh, ask questions. And, um, hey, guys, keep your powder dry and have fun shooting.